Hello, welcome to the award-winning Donahue Group. We're delighted that you could join us for a half an hour of fast-paced, highly intelligent, and hopefully not too controversial conversation on areas of great interest. We plan, oh. <laughs> so Ken was going to be controversial. <laughs> All right. She didn't say funny. <laughs> okay. Ken is going to be controversial. The rest of us are going to be refined and controlled. In any event, it's summer. It's summer. Um, and we plan, it's our great plan not to lap up, laugh uproariously and out of control as we did last time. So we'll see how we do. Best show we did. <laughs> yeah, best show we ever did. Um, I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm the moderator of this small but highly intelligent group of uh, commentators. I'm a lawyer at O'Neill Cannon. Cal Potter sitting across from me, former state senator. Tom Paneski, now associate dean at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan campus and still earning a living by teaching math. Ken Risto, soon to go back to living, <laughs> earning a living uh, as a simple social studies teacher. So we're a good group and we'll have a good time today, even though it is a little bit of the dog days of August. Kind of nice outside, but just feeling a little sleepy. So we'll see if we can wake everybody up. And I'm going to start just with one of my favorite topics is the residency rule in uh, the city of Sheboygan. Um, and we're going to talk to Tom as a former alder person about his particular views on it, but a little background. The city of Sheboygan, um, I think probably fairly reasonably, requires uh, at least a few of its employees to live within the city limits, and that would include department heads. Um, people who are hired get six months to move to town, and uh, if they don't, they can apply for an extension. It's my understanding. Well, the controversy that's coming up now is Tujer Lee, who was hired in December as the new IT or technology person for the city, has asked for an extension. It's my understanding he lives in Waukesha, and he has a wife and a number of children in Waukesha. His house is one of 89 <laughs> in his subdivision that are up for sale. So, you know, the housing market's a little rough. Um, and there's been a big controversy uh, at the city council level about extending that residency. The, the time for him to move into the city. Um, there's a vote scheduled for August 18th, it's my understanding, to give him a 90-day extension, but nunk pro tunk, as we say in the legal biz, going back to um, uh, June 20th, which really doesn't give him any more time at all, another mm -hmm. month or so. Cry foul, great idea. Has the council lost its mind? Is this the smartest thing they've ever done? What do you think? Well, you're going to look at me, but I, when the, we changed the residency law back in when I was an alderman, we just basically said department heads had to live in the city because they can, they could have a conflict of interest if they lived outside the city and they were making decisions that would affect the areas in which they lived in. So they, we kind of said department heads should live in the city and other employer, employees could live wherever they want basically. And now uh, I guess that's still in place and so the person was hired. Uh, uh, I, I don't know how they're going to resolve this. I, I've been thinking about that. Uh, he's actively involved in making major changes to the, uh, to the uh, information technology part of the city and he's having trouble selling his house. Uh, uh, I don't know how the city's going to resolve that. Uh, I, uh, I'm try I was trying to think what I would do if I, you know, what kind of information would I seek? I, I don't know. Well, if the purpose of the rule was because of what you were outlining, Tom, which is that potentially people could make decisions that might benefit the community they live in as opposed to the community they serve, serve. and get a salary for. That was the intent. What, what, in this particular gentleman's job description, can you envision a scenario where that would happen? Yeah, I mean, that, I can't. I, I mean, can't he either. He lives in Waukesha, like you said, right. and I mean, the information. how does the information technology going to benefit where he lives? Mm -hmm. uh, well, let me complicate probably it. Probably not. Yeah. And he's, pay, I mean, and heaven knows, you know, the, it's not like it's a tremendous advantage living in Waukesha and commuting to Sheboygan, I would assume, five days a week and trying to raise a family and trying to sell a property. It, it seems to me it's, there's enough incentive for him to move into the community, community. as soon as he possibly, possibly can. can and well, let me complicate it a little bit for you because it's my understanding that he is more than willing at this point to get an apartment uh, and to actually live here during the week 
um, but in, while he is still trying to sell his house because it is his desire, as I understand it, I don't have any of this firsthand, so <laughs> who knows? But it's my understanding that he's more than willing hearsay. to, it is hearsay, uh, willing Objection. to move to town. Um, it actually, it, it's got certain guarantees of, of uh, reliability, so it should be fine. In any event, the city is revising the residency. Overruled, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that means I was overruled. There you go. Oh, you quick study. Um, the city has um, exactly. really fleshing out this residency policy by some fairly draconian measures. In other words, it's not good enough that you have an address here, that your mail comes here, that you vote here, that your car is registered here, that your telephone service is here, that you pay rent here. The, the new policy or the, the, the measures that they're trying to enact to ensure that somebody really is a resident of the city are, in my opinion, fairly draconian. And I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I understand. Do they wish his wife chained to a backyard? What is the, I, uh, <laughs> what's the standard that they wish beyond what he's already willing to do? Well, I, it, I mean, it appears that if you're married, um, yeah. your spouse had called down well, better be in the community. That there is oh. no, that no, no, really, they're saying yes, that. Yes, absolutely. No, that's I absolutely. Mean, that's you reading. should we, read. You should read <laughs> this policy that the city is is looking at. It's. We had a professor. I mean, in today's world, we. I mean, we had a professor in English. She was here. Her husband was working in Massachusetts, and they were separated for four years that way. He eventually was able to come here and, got, and, he, and then he worked at UWM. But they, Not for the city of Sheboygan. They <laughs> lived apart and they, you know, they made time to get together, but people live apart. That's absolutely absurd. It, it's, it's really quite <laughs> remarkable. And so my concern is, is that um, by all measures from everything that I hear, hearsay, um, Tudor Lee is doing really a pretty stunning job. In, in less than a year, he is moving the city pretty quickly into the 21st century where it had not been technology-wise for some period of time. So I don't know what's going to happen here, but um, there seems to be some mean-spiritedness somehow, and not toward Tudor particularly, but in this new policy and these new standards that they're going to be using, which, by the way, is taken straight from a League of Wisconsin Municipalities opinion. These are some of the things that you can look for. but. Um, I mean, what if you just had a husband and wife, and they pursued very separate careers, and 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 which is far more typical than yes. it used to be. Heaven knows, has to be. People need to and right. to survive right. today. And yeah. people have apartments, you know. Sure. I mean, it's like legislators, for goodness' sure. sake, have apartments in right. in Madison well, because you know you aren't. When I worked for the DPI, I had an apartment mm -hmm. in Madison. Mm -hmm. I still live back here. My wife was liked it back here, so mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Exactly. So I. Um, no, I don't see how they can be punitive towards him. I mean, he's got a house that he can't sell. How yeah. he can't create the job market, the housing market. He's just. You're going to have to give him multiple extensions. It's the only fair thing and right thing to do. Sure. I mean, if he's shown good faith to get an apartment, he's here, and that's all you can expect of somebody. You can't expect anybody to create the economic conditions that sell houses. That's just the way it is. It's anybody fine. have a head count on the council as to where they're going to go with this? I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting to see who votes on, on what line here. Yeah. Well, there was another spin-off on this, uh, which appeared in the paper. The, what Mayor Perez wanted to make it an administrative function, decide on the uh, the uh, extension, and the council saying is no, it's our it's our ordinance. Uh, we make the decision, uh, and apparently that was a little uh, uh, give and take on that, and it's now back with the council making the decision, but. Uh, and I just, you know, saw that Dick Susha had a little letter to the editor complaining, you know, what's one, what's Mayor Perez uh, wanting to do, make an administrative function of this? He's I demanding bet, power. I, you know, I bet, <laughs> I bet Mayor Susha wishes he had thought of that <laughs> <laughs> when he was mayor. Is um, there a precedent for that? I mean, what's I the, don't what's know. The I mean, I don't know either. Those types of personnel decisions. I, 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 I would think that it is more legislative than administrative mm -hmm. action. I, I mean, I'm not sure. I haven't researched it. And it's an interesting question. It's not, to me, there's no real immediate or apparent action. A but personnel director might handle it for a while, and then mm -hmm. until it mm -hmm. became a political issue, and then it probably finds its way to a council. Yeah. 
but without being it a political issue, maybe the personnel director might handle it as an extension. Well, the silver lining in this kind of funny cloud is that I think Tudor Lee is, as I say, by all measure, pretty well regarded and uh, is moving people along pretty quickly. So, so that's a good thing, and I think it's something the city needed. Um, well, it actually indicates how smoothly and how quietly government must be running really? in the city during the summer that this becomes <laughs> quite the issue. The issue, yeah. <laughs> that's a nice change of pace, yeah, huh? Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, the. Um, uh, both uh, uh, McCain and Obama have uh, offices uh, opened up and in full swing uh, downtown. Um, and uh, where are they at? On North Eighth Street. Both of them. Yeah. Where's are the they Democratic? Sharing? And then yeah. of Citizenship. <laughs> Democrat office, I think, is on Pennsylvania. And Eighth. On Eighth. The, uh, the north, east of Eighth. Northeast corner. Northeast the loft corner. there with Dirks. Oh, okay, in the old Salt Beetle building. Yes. Okay, very good. Okay. And then the uh, Republican headquarters is where the um, old Walgreens was, uh, across the street the, from uh, uh, Yonkers. Yonkers, yeah. Boston store, excuse yes. me. Yeah, yeah. Kitty corner, as we say in Sheboygan? Yeah. Yeah, but there's no corner now at that time. <laughs> yeah, there's no corner. <laughs> That's true. That is kind of continuous. <laughs> Kitty Alley? Kitty Alley. Kitty Alley. <laughs> The old, uh, the, uh, the coffee bookstore place. Yeah, that mm -hmm. coffee bookstore. Oh, okay. Store. Mm -hmm. okay. And yeah. Walgreens. Right. It's kind of a deadly place for any business to be. It just really, <laughs> you know, it just hasn't uh, succeeded well over I the I could make a partisan remark right here. But <laughs> 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 the inter well, right. the uh, interesting yeah. thing to me is, because that's the neighborhood I work in, for a while there were all the McCain signs, and it's got a nice sharp look, I will say, a nice sharp look. and. It looks prosperous, and I haven't looked at the Democratic one yet. Um, McCain sign, mm. McCain, McCain, and above it, Jose, Jose, Jose. And I now have learned that the Jose signs, or I've observed that the Jose signs are down. Oh, so okay. I, uh, and that may be, and we can talk a little bit about there is an actual primary in the 26th Assembly District that affects most of the city. And what else? Kohler. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Yes. That. So. Uh, Terry Van Akron is the current incumbent, and I think Terry's running for his fourth yes. term. Boy, time does go quickly, doesn't it? When is the primary? If there is a primary, that's coming up then, like September 9th or September something? 9th, I think. It's this usually mm -hmm. the second Tuesday second of the... Second Tuesday uh, in September. In okay. September, so it's it's coming up. And we're sitting around before the before our um, going on the air trying to figure out the name of the, the dear fellow who's running against uh, Job Jose on the Republican side. And we haven't quite determined that, and we apologize because that's a little lack of knowledge there that uh, we should probably not confess to. But, uh, but it should be interesting. Um, I don't know what forum the the Republicans are going to use to to highlight these two, or if they're going to do that at all. Um, well, but, the little narrative in the paper when papers were filed was fellow from Kohler said he was asked to run by the Republican Party. So I think there were people giving second thoughts to a repeat of the Van Akron Jose race last time in which Van Akron got, what, 72% of the vote. Right. So if you're going to mount a, a vigorous campaign, I think you need a candidate that's going to do better than 20-some percent of the vote. Right. It's what we call in Sheboygan a schwetzing. <laughs> <laughs> so I think uh, Mr. Jose got a little bit of a schwetzing. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. I think Terry Van Akron would be very hard to beat. Yes, good, good political it. name. It is a great political <laughs> name. I like that name quite a lot, as a matter of fact. It has a certain ring to it. A little Dutch, but you know how that is. So, um, but I think Terry is pretty well. You can't say Dutch and Democratic too often. Hmm. <laughs> That's true. No, I'm not sure. south of here, at least. Uh, yeah, not south of here. Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, Dan, and I don't think Jose is going to be playing. Uh, he's got. You know, I don't know what he's learned from that last electoral experience, but I saw him and others and other politicians in the parade, the Fourth of July parade, and it seems like it's the same sort, uh, same mantra that he used in the last campaign, which was family values. Mm -hmm. okay. And so I don't know what he's going to do differently. Perhaps avoid imitating. <laughs> Hispanic. Hispanic, yeah, Hispanic people on the radio. Maybe you'll learn that this time. I don't know. 
Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it sounds like the same the same stories. And so I don't know. I can see why the Republican Party may want to find an alternative for people to consider. But yeah. speaking of the Republican Party, it's my understanding that Dan Lemahieu, um down in the Cedar Grove, Cedar, Cedar Grove, Oostburg uh, area, uh, Oostburg, uh, Southern, area Southern which would be primary opponent. Has a primary opponent. Fellow named McCarty. And that's interesting. Does anybody, I know nothing about that race. I so. believe he's in education in some way. And uh, I don't know if he's uh, running because he's more liberal and he's running as a Republican because a Democrat will never win in that district. It's just mm -hmm. almost impossible. So I don't know very much about the, the person, but I do know he has a primary. Yeah. I didn't know he had a primary until I saw some of the signs up. I was driving to Kowaskam uh, mm -hmm. Saturday, and I saw yeah I saw some of the signs yeah. up. And I, I thought, think he's What's from West Bend. And I, I was in West Bend this last <coughs> weekend. There were a lot of signs, so maybe he does have a good deal of support that uh, might be closer than we think. I mean, you I couldn't run further right than Lemayu, could you? Well, he's pretty conservative. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, yep. I mean. That's my impression and looking at his votes. Yep. And, the few forums that I've seen, and it's not been a lot of forums in, in all honesty, but I, I can't imagine that well, I think you'd Dan, run from the right. Yeah, Dan Lemmy, who certainly has a strong base, just yeah. in the sense for from his years on the county board mm -hmm. and his service as the <coughs> county board chair, and he was an excellent county board chair, and um, um, and he's strong in his small area, so the question is how... Well known as he as a result of having been an incumbent now for right. several years. Right. Yeah. So so that'll be interesting. As you know, I I'm always at the administration building on any election night for the League of Women Voters calling in campaign results. So all or voting results. So I'll be down and on September 9th, and I'll have a good sense of it. Um, the um, it, it went fairly unnoticed in the Sheboygan press until there was an editorial, but it certainly made the news in the Plymouth Review and the Beacon and the Sheboygan Falls um, news about um, a Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce initiative called Guiding Principles of Economic Development. I read the articles um, that appeared you know, in the, in the newspapers and then the um, editorial in the Sheboygan Press, which was very positive. This is an initiative on, on behalf of the uh, Sheboygan, County of Cha uh, Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce to get all municipalities working together in terms of business recruitment. I think it's a wonderful mm -hmm. idea. Yep. And um, all sorts of little municipalities, as well as the big ones, have signed on to it. But there was a great picture in the... Plymouth Review, kind of a long table of some of the signatories, and you had Mayor Perez at one end and Supervisor Holub at the other end, both smiling. And that almost never happens. <laughs> in, uh, and I, so it seemed to me that it really was a wonderful event. And um, uh, I think that the, the Sheboygan Chamber of Commerce is, I think their business development is, is, is going great guns. I think they're making a real positive effort to, to really bring businesses together and to kind of think about, you know, how do we do this recruiting business and so forth, so. Yeah, the, John Rogers, I think, is yes. a person that's in charge of that. And for all of you who want to know who John Rogers is, he was the lobster guy <laughs> in the parade. <laughs> I thought you were the lobster guy. No, so he was the lobster guy. But anyway, he's very, you know, he's You very, had lobster ears. I had lobster oh, ears. Yeah, yeah. Or lobster claws. Lobster. I was only partially lobster. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Partially lobster, man. He, he's quite an interesting fellow. He and is. he's uh, He worked in development in, uh, I think, Kiwani. Mm -hmm. And he's now here. And uh, he's leaving his mark, at least, uh, like you said, uh, Communities getting together and uh, looking to how best serve the county. Yeah, I think, uh, like I say, I think it's it's uh, anything that we can do to recruit businesses into this community. It really, obviously, I mean that's a no-brainer. It makes some sense. So unemployment is up, and it would be great to have it go down a little bit. Um, I was not at the parade, uh, the Bratwurst Day parade, and I guess I'm glad. Um, kind of a scary event, and uh, were any of you folks in the My vicinity? My parents were a block away. Okay. Oh, I was out of town, so I just read it in the paper. But, yeah. It brings into sharp relief, I think, a really complex policy issue 
um, which I know law enforcement always struggles with, which is um, high-speed chases. Yeah. And um, the plain fact is they, the officers, as I understand, the sheriff's department really stopped the chase nine blocks or so before the parade, which was a good idea. But the guy they were chasing didn't realize it. Or, well, and he's drunk, so. And he's drunk, yes. Yeah. I mean, so his judgment is not, uh, is not uh, doing too well. I've always been troubled by these high-speed yeah. chases. I know the sheriff's department, and I, I'm relatively sure the Sheboygan City Police um, certainly have uh, policies in place. Um, but it's tough. I, I Thank goodness that we live in the day we do, because I talked to uh, Chief Kirk uh, about a week ago, and he was saying that the officer that was cited in the press as moving these kids out of the way and so on got the radio <coughs> signal from other mm -hmm. officers, and it was relayed quickly that this guy is coming. And so, you know, without the communication system we have today and the ability to get the sheriff's department in contact with the city police and get to the guy who's standing on the street corner with his walkie-talkie or whatever communication device they have, um, you know, could have been very terrible had this happened 20 years ago because mm -hmm. the guy would have been blinded by this vehicle speeding down the street. Yeah, yeah, and um, so it, it was, um, it was a tough situation yes. and it certainly could have, you know, come out much worse, but uh, I'm just wondering under what circumstances high-speed chases well, it, I mean, you see a violator or you see, uh, I mean, you, a, a car with a license plate uh, that you're looking for or something like that, and you put on your blinker to go after him, and the guy takes off. What do you do? Just kind of sit there and yeah. let him go? Yeah, and if you did it all the time, everybody would take off. Well, you know, everybody so would take how off. Do you, how do you manage this? It's tough. It's it's how do you manage it? You've got to yeah. start to go after the person. Yeah. There are some there are some techniques, um, but again, require that sort of communication and coordination to um, be able to wire ahead. There are spikes that they can put on the road that really very effectively put the end to sure. any kind of uh, car mm -hmm. going forward. Um, the The problem is that high speed chases rarely end well, yeah. um, and um, and sometimes they end so terribly tragically, where really truly innocent people who mm. would not have been hurt but for the high-speed chase yeah. um, are. And so the question becomes what crime is worthy of a chase? Is an OWI? Maybe, although those are the drivers that would be particularly dangerous. Um, well, you uh, really don't know if they're OWI until after they pull over and you've actually assessed yeah. them. So although... I mean, High-speed or... I mean, so, I mean, officers often through driving have, you know, pretty good indicators that guy behind the wheels not doing too well um, so it's it is tough and it just and, and, can I interrupt us uh, yes sure uh, now to, if we in, in uh, institute this cell phone no talking on <laughs> cell phones while driving and so somebody's tootled along kind of just not paying attention and he's on the cell phone do you put your blink around and go after him and they all of a sudden take off yeah yeah okay on well, the other hand it's not as easy to just say, well, radio ahead, because for some, for some matters, it's very important for the officer to keep the driver in his sight. Yep. So he can say, when I pulled it over, pulled this guy over, it's the same guy that I saw, you know, who right. went by That's me. Right. And, That's right. And so, so See, I think a lot of people don't really appreciate that point. The, you know, you hear people talking, especially when uh, the young man from Sheboygan Lutheran was killed a couple of months ago, just through. He wasn't involved in the chase. He just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. And, oh, that was so um, sad. That was really tragic. Uh, there was some discussion about, well, just get the license plate mm. and then deal with it later. Well, the first question out of the defense lawyer's mouth is going to be, and, and appropriately so, is how do you know who it was behind that wheel 24 hours later, 10 hours later, 12 hours later? Mm -hmm. um, and they've had an opportunity to sober up or whatever it might be. You know, so yeah. so there, it is a complex question, but... Um, I mean, this could have been just potentially horribly oh, catastrophic. Terrible. And thankfully, the, the the deputies decided to stop, you know, nine blocks back. Mm, yeah. And uh, but uh, in any event, you. Um, I think uh, the investment in technology is 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 a wonderful uh, expenditure that people need to to, to support, uh, not only in, in communication to the officers, but having video coverage in the squad, so that eventually, if that car does get away, or you do. To, terminate the, the chase, maybe you can, through enhancement, get right. that license number 
and even the, the periodic intersection cameras. While we, don't, we haven't gone in Wisconsin to the um, stoplight and speeding violators oh, yeah. just by getting a picture of your car, but there are communities, in Milwaukee one, uh, where you're trying to control crime by putting in some intersections video cameras. So maybe uh, those could catch some of these people as they whiz by and an enhancement of the video, you'll get the license number. Is, it, is this more common than in the past, or is it just that the media, uh, we just are more, we just seem to be more aware of it? I was thinking about this the other day and talked with some friends about what about this don't what people get? I mean, when you see the reds and blues, you pull over. I just don't know if it's just, you know, again, um, uh, yeah. if it, it's just always been that way and we're just, just sort of just talking about it because we've had a couple episodes yeah. of it, or if it, this generation of young people have watched Grand Theft Auto 45 <laughs> and played it and, so, and somehow think this is all going to end out being okay. Yeah. Or watching cops and the chase shows, you know, the real yeah, yeah. The reality television shows that are on. I think it happens relatively rarely. And, I, you know, just like this has been a very tough summer for people swimming in Lake Michigan. Uh, I mean, we've had just tragedies and near tragedies at a rate I think feels much greater than in past summers and I think it's just one of those things but I will tell you as a prosecutor when I'm doing drunk driving prosecution to have the video of the uh, driver is a huge advantage um, in some ways both to the city or the village and the defendant because the defense lawyer can say to his client this is what you looked like are you sure you want to go to trial on this yeah. And I've had several cases settle where, you know, the defendant looks pretty silly. And then I've had some others where, you know, the blood test has come back very high and the guy looks fine. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's, a, it's a double edged sword. Mm -hmm. But overall, I would always be, you know, happier to have the video uh, than not. And I do think that that is a, I think it is a, it is mm -hmm. a great advance, but, um, but you never know how that's going to go. Um, we'll just have to, I think we'll just have to, to see, you know, how it plays out and. and I, so forth. I think probably it's population growth. I mean, we think. I mean, there, there are 5.3 million people in Wisconsin. When some of us who are getting older can remember in the 50s when we had 3 million people in Wisconsin. So, and alcohol go. abuse is not less today than it was before. I mean, it goes back to the German heritage in a mm. tavern almost in every corner. So. Um, Maybe more cars. Which you could walk to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you so go. So more cars in the family. I mean, what does an average family have today? Two, three cars. And years ago, you didn't have that. Plus the uh, mobility of young people today. So I think there are a number of factors that have changed in society that maybe give the appearance that uh, flight from police is more common. Right. And I think the, the the long series of articles that the press has done on on drinking and yes. and alcohol that was abuse long overdue. Is long overdue. I, I can I remember serving for years, and when somebody would suggest the two dollar a barrel uh, beer tax rather than the dollar, which has been in place for you know decades, you know, and you could just see the, the the effect of the the alcohol industry in Wisconsin. That was not an idea whose time had come because well, of the. I'm not sure it is yet. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that beer tax changes anytime soon, do you? I don't you? think so either. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. But again, you have improved technology in terms of drunk driving. I mean, in the old days, you'd have these, you know, kind of cranky breathalyzers, and, and there was a lot more of a defense to, to an actual prosecution. Mm -hmm. Blood tests now are really actually yeah. uh, fairly, you know, fairly easy to go with and people still don't like to find people guilty of drunk driving but they take juries tend to believe that that blood test and mm -hmm. and so I think in that respect um, um, we're catching a lot more drunk drivers and we're convicting a whole lot more drunk drivers a topic well, we still have these three four five repeat offenders that yeah. ought to be thrown in jail <laughs> for a longer period of time right and and that's a topic for a different day but mm -hmm. uh, in any event we want to thank you for joining us. We have our, we never thank our wonderful producers, Terry Kautzer and Scott Mulek up there, and our great camera guys, Steve and Fritz, who are also our, our laugh track. And so we really, <laughs> we really appreciate We give them a lot to laugh. <laughs> we give them a lot to laugh about. So thanks for joining us, and thanks to the crew.